Hi, I'm Carl, and tonight we're going to take a broad look at radio trunking systems in general, and a slightly more in-depth look at APCO Project 25 and the ACT New South Wales Government Radio Network. A trunked radio system is a digital two-way radio system that uses a control channel to automatically assign frequency channels to groups of users. This provides a number of benefits, including enhancing spectrum efficiency, rather than having lots of radio frequencies permanently allocated, which are mostly unused, a trunked system has a smaller number of frequencies which are allocated on demand. Another benefit is that it enables cross-organisation communications. Shared virtual channels, or talk groups, can be defined so that stations from different organisations can communicate. It's simple to use. For the end user, there is little operational difference between using a channelised radio or using a trunked one. Talk groups appear and work just like different channels in an older radio. And it's flexible. Configuration of user radios is done via software and can be as complex or as simple as the user's organisation requires. Let's take a quick look at features common to most trunked radio systems. Each repeater site has a dedicated frequency called the control channel. This frequency manages all activity at the site, including registering radios with the system when they are turned on, sending frequency allocations to radios when there is activity on their monitored talk group, and other housekeeping functions. A talk group is basically a virtual channel. When a radio registers with a trunking system, it declares what talk group it wishes to monitor. All radios monitoring the same talk group can communicate as if they have their own private repeater. When someone wishes to send a transmission, the communications flow goes mostly like this. A user's radio requests a talk group for communication via the control channel. The controller tells all radios monitoring that talk group to switch to the frequency indicated by the system to monitor the transmission. After the user is done speaking, the user's radio is returned to monitoring the control channel for additional transmissions. There are a number of different types of radio trunking systems developed by various companies and governments. They can broadly be split into three categories. Entry-level systems. These are relatively simple and typically provide simple trunking capabilities for voice only. Standard-level. These have a basic level of trunking support and are usually suitable for small local deployments only. And advanced level. These utilise mature and proven technology and are suitable for large networks. They have things like seamless roaming, data transfer capabilities, centralised control, some over-the-air control of terminals and interoperability between manufacturers. Some of these advanced systems include MPT1327. This was first published by the British Radio Communications Agency in 1998 and has been deployed globally including in the United Kingdom, Europe, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia and China. NXDN is a commercial system developed by ICOM and Kenwood and is commonly used in Japan, USA and mainland Europe. TETRA is a European Telecommunication Standards Institute standard designed specifically for use by European government agencies. And finally, APCO Project 25. It's a US standard also designed specifically for use by government agencies by the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials International, which is headquartered in Ohio. So we're going to take a closer look at APCO Project 25. Project 25, or P25, is a suite of standards for digital mobile radio communications designed for use by public safety organisations in North America. P25 development has been deployed over two main phases. Phase 1 uses a 12.5 kHz channel with FDMA access using continuous 4-level FM modulation. This provides a 9600 bits per second data stream with 4400 bits per second for voice, 2800 bits per second for forward error correction, and 2400 bits per second for signalling and control functions. Voice is encoded using the IMBE codec. 
Phase 2 also uses a 12.5 kHz channel. However, this uses a TDMA access scheme with two time slots. This provides a 6000 BPS data stream per time slot, which includes error correction and signaling. Voice is encoded using the AMBE plus 2 codec. The New South Wales Government Radio Network, or GRN, is a P25 network owned by the New South Wales Government and managed under contract. It covers around one third of New South Wales and all of the ACT, and operates between 403 MHz and 430 MHz. There are a large number of organisations using the GRN, both in the ACT and in New South Wales. Some of them are listed here, such as the Ambulance Services, Fire and Rescue, Rural Fire Services and the National Parks and Wildlife Service. However, there are many more, such as Sydney Ferries, Child Flight, Rail Corp and so on. Some of these services, like the ACT Ambulance and Fire and Rescue Services, are encrypted, so we can't monitor them. However, many others, such as the Rural Fire Services, are not encrypted and can be monitored. All other Australian states use P25 networks in some manner, many of them are encrypted. Since P25 originated in the US, it is widely used there, and is also in use in New Zealand, Canada, Brazil, India and Russia, and has been deployed in over 54 countries. Monitoring a trunking system requires both software that understands the protocols involved, and hardware that has sufficient bandwidth to cover both the control channel and torque frequencies, or multiple pieces of hardware to provide the bandwidth. The cheapest and most common hardware used are RTL dongles such as the RTL SDR.com dongle. Also usable are the Great Scott Gadgets Hack RF1 and the AirSpy. However, you can also go for a full hardware solution like the Uniden range of scanners. I haven't found a lot of software to decode and listen to trunk radio systems. At the moment, there appears to be three packages in active use. OP25, UniTrunker and SDR Trunk. I haven't looked at OP25 much, so I can't tell you much about it, except it's based on GNU Radio and it doesn't seem that user-friendly. My initial attempts at monitoring P25 were with Unitrunker on Windows. However, Unitrunker is just the control channel decoding software. It needs discriminator audio from a scanner or a separate SDR software to receive the audio and additional tools such as DSD Plus and virtual audio cable to let you hear what is going on. And it is also Windows only. More recently, I stumbled across SDR Trunk which is a cross-platform Java application for decoding, monitoring, recording and streaming trunked mobile and related radio protocols using software-defined radio. Let's take a closer look at SDR Trunk. Here we can see the main screen. Now I have two SDR dongles attached at the moment, but this particular screen is just showing the 2.4 MHz slice of spectrum currently being uh, monitored by the first one. You can bring up a second window by right clicking up here and selecting show if you wish to see more dongles if you desire. So across the top we, under the, the menu bar we have the spectrum display. You can zoom in on the spectrum display to see in more detail the spectrum at a higher resolution. It's also useful for determining whether or not your dongle is on frequency. Below the spectrum we have the waterfall, and below the waterfall we have the audio bar. The speaker on the left hand side here is currently showing muted, I didn't want audio interfering, and there's left and right channels. Now the M currently indicates we're in mono mode. Right clicking in the audio bar lets you change the, uh, the mode to uh, either mono or dual channel. In dual channel, one channel will be one decoded audio stream, the other channel, the right channel in this case, will be the other decoded audio stream if there are two audio streams happening simultaneously. Below that we have a number of tabs for displaying information about various functions and for configuring tuners and the playlist. Under the Now Playing tab, this lets you watch what's happening on your monitored site. If you select the control line by clicking on it, 
You can then, then examine the site details by clicking on the tabs a little lower. This allows you to look at things such as the network information, the current site details, including the primary control channel and the secondary control channel. And you can use those to make sure that you've got them defined correctly. You can also look at neighbor sites. This gives you the upload and download frequencies for uh, all the neighboring sites and what frequency bands are currently available on this particular site. As you can see here, it actually distinguishes between FDMA and TDMA channels. Fortunately, SDR trunk supports both, so it will seamlessly decode both. The map tab is used to display tracking information for protocols that provide a vehicle location. This doesn't work for P25 at this time, so for now we can ignore it. The tuners tab gives you access to configure and monitor the discovered tuners or SDR receivers on your computer. This also lets you enter and monitor the frequency error of each tuner defined in parts per million. Most cheap RTL dongles are pretty bad with frequency accuracy, so setting these up correctly is very important. The playlist editor lets you configure the control channels you wish to monitor, along with aliases to map talk group IDs to readable names and streaming output. Here are the channels. I've defined quite a number of channels for the local site, including both P25 and MPT1327 networks, ACT2 Run 1, and there are two sites that I can hear, one on Isaac's Ridge and one on Bull's Head. For the GRN, I can hear Mount Tennant, Bull's Head, Stromlo, Isaac's Ridge, Black Mountain and Mount Janini. All are available here, but I find I only need to monitor a couple of them. Just need to find the ones that actually provide the channels that I wish to listen to, or the virtual talk groups, if you like, that I wish to listen to. On this tab, we have aliases. Now, an alias maps a talk group or a talk group number with a name and an alias. So we can use these to provide more human readable names to, number, to our talk groups when they appear. So if we go back and we have a look at the individual, the now playing tab, and we look at events, we can see here under the alias, we can see individual uh, talk groups. A talk group is listed here, 40,089. That talk group is Parks and Wildlife, ACT Parks and Wildlife. It was actually an encrypted call. Because it was an encrypted call, we don't decode it. The software does not decode encrypted communications. But mapping those names at PCL Parks is done here in the aliases. You can automatically configure this via radioreference.com. If you have a paid subscription to radioreference.com, you can log in and use the API and this screen to automatically download all the aliases that you desire. Here also is a streaming tab. I've got an Icecast server set up on one of my in-house servers. So I can use this to stream the audio from this system to my Icecast server and then use my iPad or my iPhone anywhere in the house to listen to the streamed audio. I don't have to be sitting here in front of the radio. So this concludes my brief overview of trunked radio systems. Links to software and information that I used in this presentation should be listed below. Thank you very much.